Let's talk about how these two devices will communicate. The digital servo requires half duplex UART. Half duplex UART requires a single line for transmitting and receiving. You might be wondering how this is possible. How can you transmit and receive on the same line? This is all determined by who is in the listening mode and who is in the speaking mode or the transmitting mode. Let's go over a particular scenario. Let's say our our microcontroller is sending information to the, mic the, the servos. The servos are always going to be listening by default. And when they receive the packet that you're sending, they may return some information. So we need to be in the listening mode right after we transmit. What if the servos want to transmit at the same time we're transmitting? We have to set up a circuit that prevents this from happening. We're going to use what is called a logic gate, a line driver or line buffer. The line driver we're going to be using has three states. It'll have a, a high state, a low state, and a not on state. That means we can turn off the receiving when we're transmitting. The device we'll be using is called a quad buffer line driver. That means there's four line drivers or buffers inside of this chip. A line driver looks like this, or a buffer. There is an input, and there's an output. And then in this particular chip, there's also a control for this particular buffer. The control along with the input will provide three states to the output. If the input is high, then the output is high. If the input is low, then the output is low. In order for this to be high and high at the same time, and this to be low and low at the same time, the control must be in a high state. If the control is in a low state, then the output is automatically going to be off. And this, actually, the input, it doesn't matter if this is high or low. It does not change the off state if this is in a low, low state. So you have three states. This is the high state, a low state, and an off state. So when we're transmitting, we're going to make sure that the control is in, for this particular, for this particular uh, buffer, we're going to have two of these. We're going to have one for transmit and one for receiving. And this will go to RX, and this will go to the TX, because the transmitting is going in this direction, and it's going to the servos. The servos will be transmitting in this direction, and we're going to be receiving it from here. So when we're transmitting, this has to be in, in a high state, and the receiving must be in a, the, the control must be in a low state. So this is off. This will be off. When we're, right after we transmit, we turn this control off, we make it low, and then we bring the, the receiving high. So we can receive information from the, from the servos. Let's redraw it so it's a little bit clearer where this is going to be connecting. So this is the output, and then the input for the TX. And then we have our control, and then we have our receiving. That's the RX, and this is the in and out. And we have our control here. Just to make it a little bit less abstract, I will show you what pins go to where. Pin number one would be this one here, which is this pin here. And then pin number two would be this one. And then the out, that would be the in. And then the out would be pin number three. The On the same chip, there, there's four of these. And we're only going to be using two of them. So let's go ahead and number these. This is pin number four, pin number five, and pin number six. To understand this a little bit more fully, you have to understand the nature of these actual gates or buffers. And these are actually um, transistors that have these lines that are outputs as open collectors. And to understand that, you have to understand the nature of the actual transistor. So in each one of these little triangles, you'd have a, you'd have a transistor. And in a transistor, you have a base. You have an emitter. And you have a collector. The emitter within the 
the actual buffer itself is going to be connected to ground. The base serves as the input. And then, and as you may remember from our previous videos, the collector can be con connected to a higher voltage. In the input, this will be a signal level voltage, most likely in the 5 volt range. And the collector can be a higher voltage depending on what type of transistor this is and, um, and other factors of, um, of the transistor's parameters and characteristics. Uh, in this particular case, this is only intended to be connected to signal level. So you're looking at um, between 1.8 and, and 5 volts. So in the collector, we would be connecting this to 5 volts. So we would need to pull this up with a resistor to 5 volts. And then this would also be connected to the servo, to its, this is, this is the output. So we have the input, we have the, we have the output, we have the transistor. So the, the actual gate driver looks like this, or the line driver looks like this. You have the output, you have the input, then you have, this is the base, and you have the emitter going to ground, and you have the collector connecting to the output. It is our responsibility to bring this up to 5 volts using a, a resistor. And I've noticed that this value resistor can be many different values. I've seen um, 10K being uh, put here, 4.7K. So I'm probably going to be choosing some value around the region of 4.7 to 10K. So from that explanation, you know that the RX will have to, this output is going to have to have a, a resistor. And then this output will also have to have a resistor. We're also going to take these out, these two, this input and this output, we'll put them together, and then it will go to the TX, the single TX RX line, which is the half duplex line. There will be some signal on this line, but we will know exactly when that signal is going to happen because we're going to be in control of the TX, and we'll also be in control of when we think that the servos are going to be sending back information. And you might be wondering where we're going to put these two lines, the control lines. We can put these directly to the microcontroller. So I'll just put the, uh, I'll just say pin. And we have to put this on separate pins. There's another way we can do this, but it requires a not gate, an inverted gate. The data sheet actually re recommends us to use an inverter, uh, a hex inverter like this, which simply is a a logic gate that inverts the signal. And what this does is if there's a high on the input, then there will be a low on the output. If there's a low on the input, there will be a high on the output. And the reason why this is convenient is so you only have to use one pin on the microcontroller to accomplish the control of the three states. And how this would work is this would go to a microcontroller pin, and then from the same line, this would go to the not. So whenever this is high, and it's controlling the, um, the transmit, the transmit is open, it'll automatically bring a low to the receiving. So you don't receive anything while you're transmitting. And then it works the other way around as well. When you put a, put a, um, put a low to the transmit, you put a high to the receiving pin, so you, or the control pin, and you enable the receiving when you disable the transmit. I would rather exclude this from my project because it's a lot of, it would be, cause a lot of space on a, on a PCB that I might want to use for a robot and I'd rather not um, take up that much space. Even if I'm using an SMD, I'd still rather, uh, even though the, the SMD chip will be much smaller, I'd rather still save that space on the, on the PCB. So I would opt to use two pins to control instead of using an inverter to control it once. So in the programming, we might have to um, add uh, a tiny bit of code to make sure that both pins are going to be controlled rather than only one pin's controlled. I need to plan what devices will be used on what part of the chip. This is pin one. This is the, the port B here, and this is port D, and this one pin over here. And then you have port C, and then port A. Port A will have all the ADC. I don't want to use any of those because I may plug in different devices like accelerometers and gyros and things like that. Port C I'm going to use for the LCD, just so I can see what's going on. 
and uh, I will use that to essentially um, look at the state of the the, the servo, uh, look at all of the information it's going to be giving me, so I can understand the um, the state of the servo, like the temperature or the position on. Port D, that's going to be the one that is essentially reserved for the control pins of the of the um, the LCD and also the control pins for the the TX and RX um, line buffers, the line drivers, and the port B will be reserved for um, sort of extra pins if I need them. Uh, I might actually have to use one of these for the for the the buffer uh, control. Let's take a look at how this chip will be connected to the microcontroller, the quad buffer. This is the TX line, this is pin number 14, and it's going to be going to pin number 2, which is the input for the first line driver. Pin number 6 is the output for the second buffer, so that will go to the receiving. I'm going to go ahead and put arrows here so we know the, the direction, theoretical direction. So that's the transmit. This is receive. The control for the first buffer is on pin one. So that will go to one of the, most likely one of these. Let's see what we can use. Because I'm going to need three of these for control for the LCD. So I'm going to mark off three. Let's see, I'll use the one on the back. These two are reserved for the UART, the second UART. And I may want to connect it to the computer, but most likely not. So I can still use these two. So I actually only have one left, unless I want to use one of these. So I'm going to connect this one to the number one pin here to control the first line buffer. And then for the second line buffer, which is pin number four, should be this one here. One, two, three, four, yep. I will connect either one of these two if I'm not going to be using the computer or maybe PB1. I'm just going to go ahead and connect it to PB1 or PB0 actually. So I'll, I will control the second, the second buffer, the receive buffer from the PB0. These two pins are the, the crystals pins or the oscillators pins. So this will be connected to the oscillator. I'll be using the same oscillator, the 18.432 megahertz so I can get a good um, baud rate out of the out of the controller with a low error rate. Pin number seven for the quad buffer is ground, and then pin number 14 is VCC. The next pin over here is ground, and this is VCC. We'll be using a few of these pins for the SPI to program the controller, and then the rest are the PB0. Some of the PB0 is the is reserved for the SPI programming. So I'm going to try not to use those. I'm starting with the circuit that I've already created from the last video. It's the um, the one that I connected with the computer or UART. The microcontroller is here and I have the, the crystal and the capacitors already connected to the microcontroller and I have a capacitor for the VCC and ground to filter any any noise. And then I've also cr um, just plugged in the quad driver, the quad uh, buffer. And I'm gonna, you need to bring a wire to, from the pin number two to the TX on pin number 14. Actually TX is pin number 15. So we'll start with 15. And it's going to two, which is the input for the first buffer. This one doesn't need a res um, a resistor because it's the input of the buffer. The output will need a the output will need a resistor to to VCC. Since I'm thinking about it, I'll put the 10K on the output first buffer, which is pin number three. Okay, so now pin three, which is the output, is being pulled up to VCC, and the output is actually going to go to the servo because this is the transmit buffer and the output of that transmit buffer will go to the receiving or the um, the data line for the servo. I'm going to go ahead and put the other resistor on the other output. Now let's take the control pin for the first buffer and put it to our controller, the pin that we planned for, which is the these two pins are going to be used for the LCD, so I'm going to be using this pin for control. This is PD something. It's probably 6, 5, 4. This is PD4, um, port D, pin 4. And that will be used on uh, to control the first pin of the, or the control of the first buffer. Number 6, which is the output for the second buffer, 
that will go to our receiving pin, which is number 14. Okay. All right. The number five pin is the input where the servo will be transmitting into. That will need to just be connected to the number three pin since this is being transmitted out to the servo. So this is the receiving from the, or the transmit uh, line from the servo. And this is the receiving line from the servo. We're just gonna put those two together, number five and number three. We can see from here, the number five is the input, which is the transmitting from the servo. And then this is what we received to the servo. This is the out. Uh, so we'll have number three and number five connected together, as we stated in this, in this schematic here. And you'll notice that the number three pin already has the resistor. I've actually changed my mind where I want the second driver's control pin to be, and I'm gonna put it to the pin D, uh, D6. I was thinking about putting the LCD control pins there, but I can, I'd rather put the control pins over here on the port B, and I'd rather keep all this stuff on this side of the chip. It's a little bit closer together. All right, so we have the control pin, which is, uh, do I have that in the right place? I don't think so. Put it in the wrong one. Uh, needs to be in pin four. Okay, so there's the wire going from pin four, which is control, to the pin D, PD six, port D, pin six. Pin number seven is back here. The wiring for the actual servo, starting from pin number one over here, that's pin number one, which is ground. The middle pin is VDD or VC, or actually VDD for the, in this case, this is a higher voltage. And the third pin is the data pin. So we're gonna take this data pin, we'll have to take a look at the, the actual cable itself and the way it plugs in so we know which one to, to use. So since this is the data pin here, it'll be going to the same one at this location on this side. I follow the line. It is connecting to back to this side. So you can see if even if I put the both together, the, the two datas would be connected together. So I need to take a, a, a wire from this pin, put it to the data um, position here. And since this is the, this one was the one that was connecting the two together, and this is the one with the re resistor, which is the out, the output for the, um, the transmit. We'll that's where the data will be residing. It'll be This is the transmit and receive line. So now we've connected all of the connections that are necessary for the, the quad buffer line driver, uh, and we've connected it to the microcontroller and back to the servo. We'll need a nine volts to the servo, and we'll connect the ground and the nine volts to the uh, regulator. So I can bring the nine volt and uh, down to five volts um, and keep all all of the the same power supply on this uh, the same board. I will work on that on the next video. If you are following along with these experiments or producing successful projects on your own, helped by these tutorials, please let me know using the Contact Us page on the NewbieHack.com website. I would like to feature these on the website to benefit and motivate others to join this creative field. Thank you.